guys, welcome to part four of the Modern Life Jacket tutorials. Um, today we're going to be going over presets um, and macros and user palettes. Uh, but yeah, I haven't uploaded in a while, so I'm going to take this video and see what we can do with it. Um, I'm going to probably upload part five. I'm thinking I'm making it or not. Um, let me know if you guys are interested in learning about Light Jacket Manager. It's like another program inside of like Modern Light Jacket. Uh, if y'all want to know more about it and y'all want me to go over it, then let me know down in the comments below and uh, I'll make a video on it. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and start. So, the way user palettes work in Light Jockey is that when you're, you, when you're wanting to use, so we'll go to use user intensity. So, you can always use user intensity, uh, the palette on, from, on, on the park hands, and uh, that's the only thing. So, I'm going to go to user palette and I already made a preset 100%. So, I'm going to hit assign. And boom, it's gonna hit 100%. So you can do this for all lights, um, but uh, this is I put that in on purpose. That's not it won't affect it. So I'm gonna open up new sequence, and if you want all these to be affected by it, then you need to make a preset with all of them. So let me go ahead and hit. Some. I want to select all of them. We'll go to intensity. Just go 100%. All of them should be at 100%. So I'm gonna hit save 100%. Or just hundred, and then uh, save as new. Okay, just make sure. Okay, now assign it, and then now everything should be a hundred percent. So if I hit on this one, it should, yeah, hundred percent, hundred, 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 hundred. So we can do it individually now. So say I want only this front bar and this front bar to be a hundred percent. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit assign, and there you go. So that right there, that's all hundred percent, and that's all hundred percent. So this adds more flexibility and into your cue, not just your cues, uh, but I anything. Because now you have you can make 100%, 90%, and so on and so forth. So you, it gives you more creativity and it's faster. So you can get to whatever percentage you want, right, right there. So you don't have to worry about oh, I'm gonna go drag, I'm gonna go do this. It's it's all right there. And this can also be used in the Light Jockey Manager, which I'll go over in my next video if y'all are interested in learning about it. Um, that adds a, you can add a, it's really cool what you can do with it so the next thing is color palette so let's go over here let's go to user palette it's the same thing um, but again not every light is going to be the same so you probably have to do it for each light but say I want I just want a straight green I'm going to save that on, on the color palette for the master fixture that way everything I just, it doesn't really matter so hit save and I'm going to hit green so green save as new and then I'm just gonna go 100% blue and I'm gonna save that as blue save as new alright so here's what we're gonna do hamster 1 is gonna be blue and I'm gonna change hamster 2 right now to green there you go click on it so now that one's green and that one's blue it's just like that you could you could do the same effects this same user palette system applies to everything that says your user palette so effects like show me I want this at 127 percent oh, I'm hoping it's percentage but if not that's fine let's put 127 on that and then I'm gonna move on to this one and I'm gonna put this at I don't know let's go put it at 60 and we're gonna save this as 60 save as new and voila okay so now if I go this one I'm gonna switch them around so I'm gonna hit uh Okay, well I messed up. So you're not supposed to do that. You have to have both selected, that way they're both have the same program. Um and that's another thing too. You wanna make sure that whatever lights say I just want to affect the hamsters, you need to make sure you have all your hamsters inside of your setup uh, highlight. That way that is left out because if it's left out it's not gonna work. Cause even if you select all fixtures and assign it, it's not going to do much. You still get, see it's still the same. So, um, I don't understand why that, that those options are there, but anyways, that's what you need to do. Just make sure you have all your lights highlighted and that way they're, they have all that user pilot stuff saved to them. Because they're not saved individually, they're, they're saved um, over that, that one fixture. So, that's how you use user pilots in here. So, the next thing we're going to use, we're going to go over is presets inside of Light Jockey. You want to, I'm going to go ahead and use the two intimidators I have, and I'm going to just go ahead and put them both at center, and 
we're gonna make precision presets for him. So um, have him with selected fixtures, and we're gonna save this as we'll save it as a center because that's just a center position. Okay. Now we're gonna go go here. We're gonna move him up to the top left corner, and we're gonna top corner. Okay, so you have a new preset, and then we'll move this guy back down to the bottom corner. It's called bottom corner. Bottom corner. Okay. Let's just capitalize this and be literate. Okay, so those three right there. Alright, so we're just going to have one selected now, and we're going to mess with the preset. So, center, top corner, bottom corner, center, top corner, bottom. So you get the point. So now if I go to this one, it'll do the same thing. Top corner, bottom corner, center. You know, just it's going through the pre you can just these are different positions. So say like uh you're you can have a center and that's gonna be the light's gonna be pointing down. Well if you want that for a certain preset then go ahead and have it. But from my experience, um not every light setup is gonna work with these coordinates. So you always wanna have you always make your own custom coordinates like I want like right here, the light would be facing towards the crowd or right here it would be facing towards the wall. So this provides an easy, just a quick, you know, say I, I want to aim it at the crowd without having to move this around and figure out a spot that works. You can just mess with it or like tinker with it and it'd make a, just say a preset, a position preset. And again, don't forget, you need to make sure that you have both of the lights or all lights of that kind. Just see, I always have the intimidator, so but hide all the intimidators, and it'll, it'll work for all those that are, are assigned. So if they're unassigned lights and they're not on the desktop, then they're not going to work. They're not going to be affected. But if they are, then and, uh, they're not highlighted, then they still won't be affected. So you make sure, gotta make sure they're all highlighted and everything, so it just works perfectly. All right, so that's position presets. Now I'm gonna go over to macros, and it's the same. It's kind of the same thing, but it has a little bit more to it than just saying a preset alright so we go to macro here um, basically what a macro does is it it, it basically it, it emulates this it it makes it it automates it so say I want I want the the light to go around in a circle or something say I want it to move around a crowd like this just like that and I don't want to be doing this while I'm doing other things like going through cues and cue list the way you can do that is by automating, uh, automating it with your uh, with your macros. So I'm gonna put pan and tilt around the same because I want them both be symmetrical. So and you start cycling. So depending on how I want you, I want you pan. I just want that. There you go. So your your pan is your uh, x axis and your tilt is your y axis, obviously. So these are just a bunch of different uh, examples. So these are already preset in Light Jockey, so you don't have to really mess with them. But um, you can make your own. So if I go here, this is a new shape. So I'm just gonna make a new shape. Just move around oh, right there. So say you want it to move your own way, you want to just customize it to the fullest and make your own shape. I'm just gonna make a quick shape. I'm, I'm just making it out of order, just random. Um, and then we're gonna go to pan, and there you go. It started to depict that shape. Now I probably can't do it as accurately, but it, it's trying to. So you can also add delay to it. So say I wanted to delay how fast it's moving. So that's another option in there. And oops, no, I don't want to save changes. I want to move. Okay, so I'm gonna go to sign. There you go. So there's just a bunch of different shapes, and you make your own presets. So say I. I just wanted to, again. I wanted just to do that. Then you can you can make a shape like that, and it'll do it for you. Um, there's a lot more to it. There's uh, preferences and stuff. But again, you can always make a new shape and start playing around with it. Say you can save a shape saying uh, this shape is to scan the crowd, or this this shape is to move around in a circle. You just name them, and then uh, yes, I'll save it. So. That's what you can do. I mean, it's not too hard. And it, what you use, what you what you didn't use with this is you implement this into a queue. So I'm gonna save this as a sequence. Uh, I'll just call it macro, right? I'll make sure that the 
macro is enabled. Okay. So now if we hit the do sequence and we're just gonna go ahead and go to let's go to test. Test test test. Alright, so see this one's going in a triangle because that's do that's what test has. So I'm gonna drag in I'm gonna put my my sequence box. Drag in macro somewhere. Okay. It says that it's static, but it's not. So I'm gonna hit stop. And it, again, tonight you see it's doing its uh, it's doing its thing. It's moving around. So you can name this instead of naming this macro. You can name it something else. Whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Scan the crowd, whatever. And that's a macro. So again, if you use it, the techniques and, uh, and Q list and stuff that we use in the past videos. And you implement this in there, it adds a whole other level of creativity because now you can add, you can have more movement to your lights than you ever could because you add macros to it. Um, this is a very helpful tool and uh, not pre programmed but more of it's not reused for live situations because you can you can't really change that much. But see, I want this. I probably you can put this in a background too if you wanted to, but it, it's it's up to you. Uh, but that's what a macro does. It it just is a program sequence of positions. So uh, yeah, it's that's pretty much what what uh, macros do. So without without macros, it's it's still the same. But if you want to get things done faster and you want presets and sequences and stuff to run uh, smoother, then I would use macros. Um, and again, these palettes are very helpful. And like these are some of the buttons. Like I'll have Gobo at that. So these are different goals. These are just pre-programmed in there. But again, you can the user palette can't show up on here, but it can. You have to press the button. It's right here. So I'm gonna name that Gobo. Since this is Gobo 112, I'm gonna probably name it something. I don't know, Gobo Circle, whatever kind of Gobo it looks like, and describe it in here and save that as a Gobo palette. That way. Okay, I'm gonna have that as uh, a circle gobo. Okay, well that's there. But if you want it to rotate at 255 maximum, then go to circle. Let me go to your user palette. You hit save, and you name it circle gobo rotation at 255. We're just circle rotate gobo, whatever you want to call it. Um, it doesn't really matter. But it it provides for easier. Uh, Everything's already there, so you don't have to worry about having to go and figure out, okay, well, that is that fast enough, that's slow enough. You can already have presets, so it's just, you click on it, and it's right there. And it it's just more pre, you're more programming the lights now, instead of just create whatever uh, sequence you want. So, that's what basically macros, presets, and palettes to do. Uh, but my next video, it's, it's possible, I'm not sure yet, I'll probably make it next year. Uh, but I'm going to go over Light Jockey Manager and the functions within that program um, that can be used to everybody's advantage because it I uh, just learned about it the other day and because I never really paid attention to it but now I, I've looked into it and learned it and it's a really good uh, program it's basically Light Jockey but in a live sense so uh, like the video if you enjoyed it and you learned something from it uh, sorry I'm uploading a while, but I'm looking forward to uploading a lot more next upcoming year. And uh, let me know down in the comments below if y'all want to learn anything else about Light Jockey. And if you need any help, just feel free to message me and I'll help you out and stuff. So, thanks for watching. Have a very awesome, awesome day.